A myth machine is this playground. It's a playground of the post-human that unfolds on the intersection of a story and a game that's played collectively by the viewers. And it becomes this like playground to rehearse and reimagine uh, the idea of the human um, and to expand it uh, using these non-human forms of intelligences like the AI program behind me, uh, but also uh, one of the first technologies that has been available to humankind, which is stories. Uh, so it's this site to uh, create more stories together. We're all storytellers, right? Like it's this uh, thing that has allowed us to not just bear witness to ourselves in the present, but also to carry on uh, you know, our lives into the future, to speak across time, you know, to generations that will come after us. And they also allow us to kind of speak to all that has gone past. Like it allows us to move through timelines. I'm kind of drawn to the idea of play as a, as a subversive tool, you know, where uh, the kind of structures and the weight of history that kind of like overrules pretty much every aspect of our daily lives uh, gets to sit by the side uh, while the game is on. It's like, you know, it kind of leads us to new exits from the, the, the heaviness and the weight of, of those structures. It allows for chaos, luck, chance uh, to enter the fray. So you play sensorially, you know, the idea was to uh, kind of uh, sidestep the limits of language, you know. By sidestepping what I mean is like you enter the space sensorially, you know, so through sight, sound, touch, um, they, you start like kind of playing and navigating the space. And as you kind of like, you know, say you, when you speak or when you kind of, you know, touch the sonic sculptures or even, you know, when you kind of bring your sense of your own subjectivity, your uh, memories, your, um, your own imagination to the space, you start uh, infecting it in a certain way. You know, it starts like kind of uh, growing in the shape that you give it. You know, that's where it kind of becomes a game, where, um, where the game itself, uh, or the, the kind of the world that's sort of unfolding, keeps uh, transforming as you add to it, you know? Uh, so it's, it becomes this machine that can generate collective mythologies in a certain way. Each limb has a AI script attached to it, uh, which is picking up sound and uh, also uh, guiding the movements of the creatures. So there's no singular mind to any of these creatures. It's a collection of AI scripts which kind of act as their mind. So you could think of them as a kind of congregation of minds, this collective uh, that is uh, bringing these creatures to life, so to speak. Um, and they're not governed by a kind of hierarchy of mind and limb. You know, the, 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 that, that division between the mind and the body is collapsed. Uh, and that produces this strange, um, you know, being that moves in congress of minds. The way Anhad unfolds is um, each of the limbs has a um, part of a song that I recorded with my friend Niyati Upadhyay. And, uh, each step that it takes uh, triggers one part of that song. Now, uh, like as like you know, one or two limbs start like two of the tentacles kind of land on the terrain, uh, they trigger uh, parts of the song. And if they were to land together, uh, they create these like harmonies. So um, yeah, it's this. It becomes this un infinitely unfolding, modulating song that could yeah continue forever. <laughs> Like, you know, artificial intelligence is on this verge of uh, flattening the kind of messy multitude of the human into this very teleological kind of singular narrative, you know. One of the kind of gestures of myth machine, of this unfolding world, is to use those same technologies uh, and not uh, impose a kind of, you know, uh, this normalizing kind of uh, flattening singularity but uh, have it explode into some kind of chaos and, uh, um, and then become a tool that can generate 
stories. This entire thing is like one work for me, you know, it's this one story that's sort of unfolding with each piece that I make, each thing that I find uh, that gets kind of woven into a larger unfolding narrative that then we create collectively. Like, you know, I see myself as a viewer to this in unfolding as well. And uh, artificial intelligence sort of became this way for me to uh, remove even my hand from uh, the making of this world. Like, you know, uh, because the programs that are sort of like, you know, kind of tottering about behind me, um, they do so beyond the kind of limits of uh, how, what I have programmed them to do, you know. Um, so uh, these movements are being triggered by the sound in the space, you know. Uh, and uh, what's interesting is that, like, you know, say if humanity were to end, you know, uh, like we were, because, I mean, it's not that hard an idea to imagine now because we are constantly faced with the prospect of our own extinction. Um, these programs, uh, these artificial intelligence, uh, intelligent beings uh, would continue on to respond and move in these kind of strange landscapes uh, beyond the beyond our own extinction uh, until like the last sounds of the universe are heard. Um, so it's this strange uh, thing that can outlast us. Like artificial intelligence presents us with this idea of what is to come, this future that is to come. Um, and uh, like to be able to hold a conversation with what is to come next is uh, really exciting for me, like, you know, in terms of um, how can we collectively sing to the future uh, is what I'm interested in orchestrating, you know, that, that uh, song across space and time. <laughs>